Naming acids is all about patterns. If you learn the pattern, a few exceptions, and you're good to go. We'll use this flow chart here to name some simple acids. The type you'll see in a general chemistry course. We'll start with the classic, HCl. For HCl, we have two different elements, H and Cl. So we're going to use this part of our flow chart. We start by writing the prefix hydro. Then we take the stem. So we'll take the element chlorine and we'll take the INE off and that'll leave us with our stem, C-H-L-O-R, and then we add I-C. We write acid and we're done. That's the name for HCl, hydrochloric acid. So give these two a try using the flowchart. We have H2S and then HF. For H2S, we have H and S, so we have two different elements, so we'll use this part of the table. So we write hydro, and then we write sulfur, but we're going to cross out the ending and change that to ic, and then write the name acid. That leads us with hydrosulfic acid. There's a bit of a problem, though. Sulfur is an exception, and we'll see it quite a bit. With sulfur, we have to leave the UR in the name. So we have to put that UR back here. And that makes the name for H2S hydrosulfuric acid. We'll see sulfur again several times, so this is a good exception to remember. For HF, we have two elements again, so we write hydro. Then for F, we go to the periodic table, we look it up, fluorine. We remove the INE, and then we add ic to the stem there. Add the word acid, and we're done. Hydrofluoric acid is the name for HF. In this video, we're using a basic definition for acids. It's the one used in general chemistry. And that's that when we put acids in water, they give off an H plus ion. We call it the hydrogen ion. So I take something like HCl, I put it in water, it dissolves, and we get H plus and Cl minus. The H plus is what makes it an acid. So when we think about pH, it tells us how acetic something is, the H, that stands for how many H plus ions there are in that solution. So let's move on to what we call oxyacids, acids with three different elements. We'll start with the vicious HNO3. We have H, N, and O. That means we're going to be using this part of the flow chart. Note that we have three different elements, and we also have oxygen. These are called oxyacids, and we name them using these rules. For these oxy acids, the periodic table is not really going to help us. We need to use what's called a common ion table. This is a table that lists polyatomic ions. These are ions like NO3 or SO4. They have more than one element involved. So we have this NO3 here, and we're going to look it up on the common ion table. Usually you're given one of these common ion tables in class or in tests. Check with your teacher, though, to be sure. So we have H, the plus sign. NO3, therefore it needs a minus sign. So we're going to look up NO3 minus on the common ion table. So we have polyatomic cations, those are the positive ones. Anions, those are negative. We have negative one, and we're looking for NO3 minus. And here we go. NO3 minus is the nitrate ion. So we'll remember nitrate and go back to our flow chart. We write nitrate, and then we look at our flow chart. We see that if it ends with 8, we're going to use this rule right here. So we have the stem and then ic. So we get rid of the 8. That leaves us with our stem, N-I-T-R, and now we write ic. Next, we write acid, and we're done. Nitric acid is the name for HNO3. So give this one a try, H2SO4. For H2SO4, we have 1, 2, three different elements. One of them is oxygen, so we have an oxy acid, and we use this part of our flow chart. We have our polyatomic ion here, this SO4, and we'll need to look on the common ion table. Since hydrogen is a plus one, two times plus one will have a plus two, the SO4 is going to be a two minus. So on the common ion table, we're looking for SO4, two minus. We'll go down the table. We see we have the negative one polyatomic ions. There's the negative two, and SO4 2 minus is the sulfate ion. So we remember sulfate, go back to our flow chart, we write sulfate, we have 8, so we're going to use this rule right here. We'll cross out the 8 and change it to ic, 
and then we write acid. Hopefully you remembered that sulfur is an exception and we need to include that UR in the name. So let's put that back and the name for H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. For HNO2 we have our three elements and then we have this NO2. So this is plus one on the H. So this is going to be NO2 minus. We look it up on the common ion table and we'll find out that it's called the nitrite ion. So we write nitrite. And now that we have the ending ITE, we'll use this rule here. We're going to change ite to OUS. So we cross out the ite and write OUS. And then we write acid. So the name for HNO2 is nitrous acid. If we had HNO3 with a nitrate, it would be nitric acid. Give this one a try and don't let me trick you with sulfur this time. We have our three elements and we have this SO3 here. We know that hydrogen's plus one, we have two of them, so plus two. We'll look up SO3 two minus on the common ion table and we'll find that it's sulfite. So let's write that. We'll cross out the ite and write O U S and add acid. Then we'll remember that we have to have the UR in there for sulfur and we'll fix it. And that gives us the name sulfurous acid for H2SO3. We'll wrap up with HClO4 because it gives people problems sometimes. We name it the same as the other oxy acids. So we look at the H, that's a positive. We know that the ClO4 is going to have a minus one charge. We look it up and we find out that it's perchlorate. So we write perchlorate. And from there, it's the same thing we've been doing. We cross out eight, write in ick, and write acid. This is Dr. B with some basic rules for naming acids, and thanks for watching.